I have no doubt that we will eventually find ways of crossing the immense distances of space in just a few years. One of our species, great strengths, is embracing new ideas and evolving them into cutting-edge technologies. Space is packed of the known and the unknown, but the unknown vastly surpasses the known, and we are constantly confused by events that we cannot explain no matter how hard we try. We can detect many weird things owing to modern technology and competent data analysis, even if we don't know what they are or where they came from. A series of strange radio signals emerging from space has left even the most informed NASA experts baffled. What exactly are these strange radio signals? Are they sent by intelligent aliens attempting to communicate with us? And how do they impact your daily life? Join us as we dig into the unusual radio transmissions received from space by NASA. Sitting in a comfortable, well-lit room on Earth, space may appear to be a peaceful place where you may enjoy privacy away from the rush and bustle of the big cities. That notion, however, could hardly be more incorrect. One of the most prevalent is radio emissions, which originate from almost everywhere, including planets and stars, exotic objects such as pulsars and black holes, and galaxies. Even human technology emits radio waves. Therefore, radio waves are emitted from an endless number of sources at any given time. Despite the numerous conceivable sources, astronomers have discovered new and unusual radio wave signals unlike any discovered previously. The radio waves fit no known patterns of fluctuating radio sources, yet are coming from the direction of our Milky Way galaxy's core. The ASCAP radio telescope was used to confirm the discovery. What is ASCAP? It is an Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, a next-generation radio telescope that incorporates unique reception technology and cutting-edge ICT systems. It is made up of 36 antennas, each 12 metres in diameter, that all function together as a single instrument. When ASCAP is finished, it will be capable of high dynamic wide field imaging employing revolutionary phased array feeds, providing a unique new capacity within radio astronomy. ASCAP's architecture is unusual among radio telescopes, since its antennas move on three axes and will detect and boost radio waves using phased array feeds or radio cameras rather than single pixel feeds. Because of these characteristics, the telescope will be able to examine vast regions of the sky with unparalleled sensitivity and speed. Why did scientists think this radio wave was special from anything else they have had before? They stated that it has a very high polarization, which suggests that its light oscillates in just one direction, which rotates with time. Aside from that, the brightness of the object changes by a factor of 100 and the signal appears to switch on and off at random, unlike anything the scientists had ever seen before. Initially, astronomers suspected it was a pulsar or a sort of star that releases massive solar flares. However, the signals from this new source do not match those emitted by celestial objects. While the study on the radio waves continues, the source of the signals has been identified as ASCAP J173608.2-321635. Despite the fact that the scientists were surprised by the source of the emission, the discovery was nothing short of miraculous. The astronomers detected six signals over a nine-month period in 2020. But when they used optical telescopes to look for the source in visible light, they saw nothing. The Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia also produced no results. This telescope, located just outside the town of Parks in New South Wales' central west region, is one of four instruments that comprise the Australia Telescope National Facility. Parks has a diameter of 64 metres, making it one of the largest single-dish telescopes dedicated to astronomy in the Southern Hemisphere. It began operations in 1961, and since then, the surface control system, focus cabin receivers and computers and cabling have all been modified to maintain the telescope at the forefront of radio astronomy. The telescope is now 10,000 times more sensitive than when it was initially installed. However, it was unable to identify the source of the radio signal. Fortunately, South Africa has the Meerkat radio telescope, a network of 64 interconnected receptors. A receptor is the entire antenna structure, 
including the primary reflector, sub-reflector, and all of the receiver's digitizers and other electronics. 48 of the receptors are clustered in a 1 km diameter core region. Because Meerkat is more powerful than Parkes, scientists turned to it to solve the enigma of this strange radio signal. Meerkat did identify the signal, but it was sporadic and inconsistent, indicating that the source was much different. This source vanished in a single day, despite having been present for weeks in earlier ASCAP observations. Astronomers must now narrow down the source of these odd signals. They have a list of potential sources to investigate. To start, the radio waves could be emanating from a star. Stars are one of the few sources that may emit polarised emissions, but because their X-ray and radial luminosities are often correlated, astronomers expect to detect only X-rays from them. Additionally, near-infrared emission would be substantial and noticeable, thus scientists rule out the idea of stars since the source does not have a particularly small ratio of X-ray infrared to radio emission. A pulsar is the next likely source for this radio signal. What exactly is a pulsar? Pulsars are fascinating spherical compact objects the size of a huge city, yet with greater mass than the Sun. They are not, however, stars, or at least not living stars. Pulsars are members of the neutron star family, which is formed when a star more massive than the Sun runs out of fuel in its core and collapses in on itself. This stellar death usually results in a massive explosion known as a supernova, which we will discuss in another video. A neutron star is the dense nugget of material left over after this explosive death. Despite their fascination, pulsars were ruled out as the source of ASCAP J173608.2-321635 radio emission. Why? This is due to the absence of pulsed emission from the source. It's likely that it's a pulsar with a lot of scattered energy, a pulsar with an ultra-long period or a pulsar in an eccentric binary system. However, it does not appear to be your typical pulsar. Another possibility is a magnetar. What is a magnetar? It has to do with magnets as the name implies, but on a gigantic scale. If a magnetar is placed halfway between the Earth and the Moon, everyone on Earth will feel the effect since all credit cards on the planet would be wiped. If you were to approach within 600 miles or 1000 kilometers of a magnetar, you would perish instantly because the magnetic field would destroy your body, ripping electrons from your atoms and transforming you into a cloud of monatomic ions, which are single atoms without electrons. But that's not all there is to these weird objects. Magnetars emit massive quantities of energy in the form of flares, X-rays and gamma-ray bursts. As a result, they are connected with extreme events in the universe, making them, along with black holes, the strangest phenomena in the universe. So what excluded magnetars from being the source of this radio signal? Magnetars, on the other hand, have fairly flat spectra, which means that the intensity of the emission does not fluctuate significantly as a function of frequency. This contradicts the observed nature of this source. Magnetars generally have intervals of 1 to 10 seconds, which meerkat periodicity searches rule out. However, there is a chance that it is a unique, ultra-long period magnetar that requires further investigation. Could this radio signal have been caused by a gamma-ray burst? Let's have a look at gamma-ray bursts. They are the universe's most powerful and brightest explosions, thought to be produced during the birth of black holes. Even though they last only a few seconds, gamma-ray bursts release as much energy as the sun will emit throughout the course of its 10 billion year lifespan. Gamma-ray bursts are classified into two types, long-lived and short-lived. According to NASA, the former is related with hypernovas, which are ultra-powerful supernovas that occur when stars 5 to 10 times the mass of our sun die and implode into black holes. The latter accounts for 30% of such occurrences and is most likely created by the collision of two ultra-dense stellar corpses known as neutron stars, resulting in the formation of a black hole, or when a black hole consumes a neutron star. However, due to the degrees of circular and linear polarization, the steep spectra and the short time scale over which it declined, gamma-ray bursts are also ruled out as the source of this mystery radio signal. A tidal disruption event is another potential examined by the astronomers. 
tidal disruption events occur when a star passes too near to a compact object, such as a supermassive black hole, and the compact object's tidal field is strong enough to overcome stellar self-gravity and tear the star apart. Tidal disruption events, on the other hand, are ruled out for the same reasons as gamma-ray bursts are. A galactic center radio transient, or GCRT, is another proposed source of the radio signal. In fact, this one appears to be more plausible. GCRTs have steep spectra, are highly polarized, and do not emit X-rays. However, just three galactic center radio transients have been discovered, and the source of these transients, if they are even the same, remain unknown. Furthermore, the time scale on which the emission fluctuates for ASCAP J173608.2-32163535 does not match the time periods of other galactic center radio transients. The origin of this radio signal remains a mystery that scientists are eager to answer. So how do we go from here? The experts intend to keep a careful check on the object and use the equipment at their disposal to hunt for additional hints as to what it may be. However, help is on the way, which might speed up their work and offer up many new ideas. The Transcontinental Square Kilometre Array Radio Telescope will be online within the next decade. This project is a collaborative multinational effort to construct the world's biggest radio telescope with a collecting area of over a square kilometre, one million square metres. The SKA's magnitude marks a huge leap forward in both engineering research and development toward developing and delivering a one-of-a-kind instrument with full design and planning currently well underway. The SKA will bring together a multitude of the world's top scientists, engineers and policy makers to bring the project to completion as one of the biggest scientific initiatives in history. The SKA will ultimately employ thousands of dishes and up to a million low frequency antennas, allowing astronomers to watch the sky in unprecedented detail and survey the whole sky far quicker than any present system. Because of its unique design, the SKA will have unequalled scope and observations far beyond the image resolution quality of the Hubble Space Telescope. SKA will also be able to image large portions of the sky in parallel, something no survey telescope on this scale or with this degree of sensitivity has ever done. With a number of other large optical and infrared telescopes being developed and launched into space over the next few decades, the SKA will ideally complement and lead the way in scientific discovery. Astronomers anticipate that the capability of this telescope will assist humanity in solving mysteries such as this recent discovery and opening up vast new regions of the cosmos to investigation in the radio spectrum. Let us know what you think of this unusual radio signal in the comments section below.